Hi, welcome to The Peaceful Home. Today is our one hour fall organizing challenge. So if you want to learn how to decorate a small space in under an hour, how to get motivated to deep clean, and how to decorate shelves for fall, stay tuned. I'm Teresa Elling and I wear many hats, but one of those is professional organizer. And I love teaching people how to organize their space to bring calm and peace into their lives. So today I think will be really fun. I've chosen for my one hour challenge to organize my coffee bar. And it's been a little neglected lately. Um, there's a couple things that need to be moved around. I need to go through coffee cups. Also, my cupboards, uh, I have a grandson who just started walking and he's been opening these and pulling everything out. So if you have children that you need to kind of keep things away from them, you need to do some child proofing, I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Here's what you need to get started. You'll need a dust rag or feather duster just to get the first layer of dust off and then some cleanser and a rag to deep clean. And I use a white eraser quite a bit, especially with coffee. If you don't know this trick, coffee and tea stains in mugs will come right out with a white eraser. It's also really good for deep cleaning your coffee pot, which honestly I would maybe do twice a year. <laughs> I don't even drink coffee, but everyone else in my family does. So we do have a coffee maker and every once in a while I like to give it a good clean because it really just builds up all that um, grunge on it. So this comes in really handy. You also might need a step stool so you can get up high. And I recommend a table. If you have one, like a folding table or just a small table you can pull over, especially if you have littles, you can put your stuff on here and not have it on the floor. But if you have floor space or counter space, that works great too. And of course you need your space, the space you're gonna organize. Um, you might not have a coffee bar, but maybe you have an area in your kitchen where you prepare coffee and tea or smoothies and you wanna do that spot. Maybe you have a small pantry or a closet. Um, just pick an area and we're gonna to go to work on that and you'll be amazed at what you can do in a short amount of time. Now, if you have had things like this up on the shelf for quite a while and you've just done a light dusting week to week, you might want to just pop these things in the dishwasher or hand wash them with soap and water rather than dusting to get them really clean. I love this tray. It belonged to my grandmother and it's perfect for putting my tea bags in. And it's funny because I won't even notice, I don't even know if you can see this, but it gets so dusty and I won't notice it for a few months and then I'll just come in and pull all the bags out and clean it really well. I'm going to go ahead and pull out all of my coffee mugs so that I have them all in one spot while I'm sorting them. These are actually items that belong with my tea party stuff. So cream and sugar and a jam set. So I'm gonna clean these up and put them away where they belong. It's a great idea to wash things you don't normally wash, like your uh, sugar dispenser. Just because over time, grime builds up on the outside, sugar gets stuck and corroded around um, the lid. So I was wiping down this coffee canister when we um, grind coffee, we put the grounds in here and it's got something really sticky on the outside and I tried wiping it, but I'm just gonna dump this and wash the whole thing, get it really clean. This is so much better. And actually that sticky stuff was not only on the outside, it was on the inside as well. So I made sure to clean this really well and make sure it was thoroughly dry. And um, also I was able to take the seal off, which is a really great way to deep clean because stuff gets stuck under there. 
So you can take the seal off, make sure everything is nice and dry, and then you can seal it up and know that there's no moisture inside. And again, this is like a once a year thing. Like this is not a weekly thing I do at least. Um, you might, and that's fine, but I don't have the time to clean like this weekly or even monthly. But once or twice a year, I really like to get things good and clean. Make sure that all of your food items are set aside and that you go through them looking at expiration dates. If you've had a tea for so long you can't even remember when you got it, it's probably time to toss it. If you're not sure about something and it doesn't have an expiration date, usually I'll mark when I checked it last. So this is August of 2020. And then in the future, say a year from now, when I check it and I can say, oh, the last time I looked at this, was 2020 it's been a year and we haven't even used this tea so I'm gonna to toss it that's just one way you can keep track that works well with spices also I have my cabinets empty but it wouldn't even fit on this table so I have some things back here and on my island and I'm gonna tidy up and do some sorting touching each thing and asking do I love this does it bring me joy and do I want to keep it um, what would happen if I just got rid of some of these things and decluttered my life? I have rarely, 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 I can think of one time when I regretted getting rid of something. And the peace of mind that comes from all the other stuff that I did get rid of and I have more space is so worth it. I even try to avoid the extra steps of moving things, taking everything off the shelf, but it's really important to do a thorough job. When I went to take this sign off, there were actually some little tiny dead bugs underneath the frame, and it was really gross. I'm glad they were dead, but I got to clean those up. And so I'm curious what's behind here. And I don't know if you can see the streaks coming down. I'm guessing that that is from the steam from the coffee maker. I know you don't know that I took a break, but I did. This isn't an hour straight. I had to break it up, um, change my shirt after a spill, take care of a baby for a while, get some lunch, and now I'm back. I spent the first 20 minutes pulling everything off, wiping all the shelves, and beginning to sort through and decide what needs to go, what's been expired, and what is staying. And then I spent another 10 minutes organizing this stuff and putting it back away. Now, this is not all that attractive. To be honest, I could go out and get amazing containers and baskets and make everything look um, uniform and beautiful, but to be honest, this is not where I want to put my money. I don't want to buy anything new for this area. Plus, um, I told you that I wanted to make this child proof for my grandkids. Now, I firmly believe in child training and in training them not to get into things and that your no means no. However, you cannot train your children to stay out of everything all at once. There has to be some grace. There has to be some things that are um, child-proofed and there's no options and then things where you're slowly training them. So I really feel that's important and this just is not an area that right now I want to make off limits for my grandkids. So all of the things that are here are unbreakable and um, things that they can pull out and play with. I even got this box and just put some stuff in here that um, the kids can play with, they can pull apart, they can get into this. And I don't have to just be peace of mind for me that when I'm cooking in the kitchen, the kids have more free range and places they can go and things that they can play with. One of the main ways that I motivate myself to deep clean is to give myself the reward of getting to do some decorating when I'm finished. So maybe I've thrifted a new rug and I decide I'm going to clean my whole living room and then I get to put that rug into place. So in this case, decluttering the cabinets, cleaning everything, and now I get to do my fall decor. 
And I will tell you, it really works for me because I will be just chomping at the bit to put a couple things up and I just discipline myself and say, no, I do not get to do that until I do my cleaning first. So give that a try. It really inspires me to get the work done that I need to do. And then this is my reward. I'm gonna show you how I style these shelves and this can be used in any open shelving, bookcases, things like that. And the trick is that it doesn't magically come together. You have to play with it. You have to, you know, just fiddle with things and move them around and see what you like. This is something that I put together just with some dry flowers and I know I want to use that somewhere. I think I'll start with books. That's always a good anchor spot for me. So I tend to put my decor on the top shelf so that I can make sure this shelf has things that I use like coffee mugs. don't want this to be too tall. I felt like this was just too tall of a stack, but having just one book this way isn't quite right either, so I, I'm going to fill in. I'm going to go check my bookcase for some books of similar colors. Found a couple. Let's see. Yeah, I like that. And then let's try this one. Um, this is one of the items that I thrifted just a few weeks ago, and I just put some random dry flowers, um, faux flowers, in here, and it's a little set, so I'm not quite sure yet where I'm going to put this. holiday dishes. I use them for fall and winter, so mainly Thanksgiving and Christmas. They're um, the Johnson Brothers Friendly Village set, and I have been collecting these for years. My grandmother got me started with the collection when I was newly married, and she would add to it each year, and so I'm just going to take some of the pieces and arrange them up. decided that I wanted some height up above, so I went and grabbed one of my uh, blue jars and I had some um, faux, kind of a eucalyptus, which I don't even think eucalyptus really turns orange like this, but I thought they were really beautiful and I'm just going to give it a try up on top. I'm going to add a little bit more to these guys and I just got, um, it was a lot fuller, I got this at Hobby Lobby and I use wire cutters just to cut apart sections and then you can use them for all kinds of things. You can tuck them into wreaths, just tuck them into baskets, anywhere you want a little splash of color. I just keep stepping back to get perspective and look at it. And what I'm noticing here is a lot of white, a little too much, but I do have a sign that I think I will prop up back there. And the other thing is this is pretty open and this is a bit crowded. So I think I'm going to pull the um, water, um, what do you call that, tea kettle, <laughs> over to the other side. Well, I'm finished, at least for now. As the days go by, I'm sure as I'm standing back in the kitchen and I look over to this area, I might see something that bothers me and I'll just switch it really quick. This is the next morning. We had family arrive last night and there was a lot going on and I wasn't able to finish filming. 
So this is where I landed last night. This is what the coffee bar looked like and I wasn't super happy with it. But um, often I need to sleep on it, you know, just take a day or two and then tweak things. You really get a fresh perspective the next morning and that's what happened in this case. You'll notice that I put the tall um, arrangement up on the top to bring height, but I really ended up not liking it. And I didn't like how tall it was and that I had it on the end, which it had to be on the end to not block my welcome sign. And the other thing was noticing that my word signs were piled on top of each other. And I also felt it was too cluttery. I just wanted a little more space in there. So I moved things around again, and this is what I ended up with this morning. And I am much happier with this. A couple of things that I would like to point out, when you are styling shelves like this, a bookcase, open shelving, um, any type of bar or even the mantle, this comes in really handy, these tips. So there's three things I'm gonna talk about. First is color, second is the type of items, and third is word signs. So first of all, color. You want to make sure your eye will tend to go around, bounce with color. So white here to a little bit of white to some white there to a little bit of white here. I'm going to move this guy. Um, your eye follows color. Same with the yellow orange. I've got a little pop of it here. Your eye moves around to similar colors. So make sure you space it out and you don't lump it all in one area. The teal is another color where you can see that your eye follows the, the different pops of teal. So the second one is the types of items. So you can have baskets, you can have glass, um, just all the different textures, fabrics. So in this case, books, the books are spread out. The dishes are spread out a bit. Um, plants and flowers are spread out. Again, it keeps your eye moving throughout your arrangement because really what you're doing is making a giant arrangement. And these are the things that make it pleasing to the eye. The third thing is word signs, which these are super popular these days and I love them. But I noticed before I had my give thanks sign directly above the cream and sugar. And so that kind of makes your eye go, oh wow, there's a lot going on right there. And another thing is you don't want to do too many. I have one of my favorite quotes about fall that I actually usually put right here. And I'm not using it this year because I already have three signs that have words on them. And I think that's plenty for this size of space. But I did kind of space them out so your eye travels from one to the next. I also stole a lot of things from around the house. Sometimes just getting things from another room and bringing them in gives them a fresh new look in a new space. So try that. You don't have to go out and buy new things. Reuse what you already have and maybe just bring a few little new touches. In my fall decorating video coming up, I'm going to show you how I decorate the rest of my house and I'm going to talk about why I even bother decorating for different seasons and holidays. And I'm going to show you one of my favorite ways to decorate for fall that is absolutely free. So stay tuned for that video. I hope you were able to do the one hour fall organizing challenge and that you learned my little trick of getting my organizing and cleaning done first before I bring in some new decor. So that motivates me to get the less desirable things done and get to the fun part. Uh, thank you so much for joining me on The Peaceful Home. If you like this content, I would love it if you'd subscribe and I hope you have a really great day.